Hi, right, what's going on guys? It's Almond. Welcome back to another Loser 101 video. In today's video, I'm going to give you guys my honest opinion and talk about everything that came out with the whole Selenopolis update. We should be seeing Selenopolis coming into Live Realm soon, maybe this week, maybe the week after, something around that. That's usually what happens. But still, I wanted to make a video talking about my entire opinion on the whole update, the whole test realm experience, because literally I have tested everything and anything there is to do on test realm. I think the only thing I realistically didn't like in-depth test is Beastman stuff, but usually people in like the kitten skill will just tell me, hey, they're good or bad. I don't have to worry too much about it. Um, that type of stuff I just try not to get too involved in with the Beastman stuff. But all the other content, like, you know, the actual update and spells, fights, challenge mode, everything like that, I tested all that stuff, right? So, um, you guys will see me talk about every individual thing that came out in this update. Some things I might leave out because maybe it's just because, in my opinion, I don't feel like even talking about it or it just didn't affect me as a whole. But I did talk about some things that I really did, did just, I feel like I should point out and stuff. So, if you do enjoy this type of content, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all type of stuff. Join Discord. We're close to 900 members in the Discord and I appreciate everyone that's been subscribing. Hopefully, your next goal is 5k. Don't know how fast I'll reach that. Probably not for a while, but who knows? You know, with, with your guys' support, it's insane like at least the past couple videos i've been like, getting constant like at least a thousand views on most of my videos so i appreciate all you guys but let's talk about like some stuff that we did experience during test room like the quest line was bugged at one point and you know characters did have to be reset look i'm like you know in the moment i was upset about it but realistically i still quested through i mean i still tested everything does it did it like ruin them like me in the moment yeah i mean right i don't think anyone likes being reset in test room um but it is test room right it's not affecting you in live realm uh, of course i was gutted in the moment but like the quest line being bugged it is what it is right it is what it is uh if you think about it it was like a mini spoiler one <laughs> but uh eventually you know that all that got stuff fixed and you know we we're able to finish the whole quest line and stuff which uh we'll get into right now but let's talk about some of the bosses that you face right i know like the main bosses you fight is like that fusion boss that you fight there was like raw um there's the whole color theory dungeon of thought uh anubis tourette i feel like those are like the main ones that people are going to recognize and of course luminous prophet and like all that stuff right but i think the, the how the fights are made were done pretty well i think at first when i did the whole playthrough and stuff some of these bosses didn't even have cheats um tourette and anubis and i think thought didn't have even cheats it, because we we're just called incendiating so it just didn't affect anything but later on i did test them again like towards like the last week of test realm and uh, they did have cheats and stuff but like after testing it a couple times realistically it's not bad i mean it, they're kind of straightforward cheats at least the cheats visually tell you uh what you're supposed to do you just kind of have to understand what the cheat line is saying which i know most people are just gonna go on the wiki or look up a video how do i do this fight there you go right but the people that like don't need to do that and they just look at the cheats, you understand what to do. It's really not that bad. But I'd say they're very user friendly, right? I think Raw was kind of weird at first when I first did see his cheats. But now I went back and did it like, you know, towards the last week of test round. His cheats are very understandable now. Um, but yeah, it, it didn't make sense to me at first because it made it seem like it had to do with moon spells or sun spells. Uh, but it's just realistic mirroring the blades, it's like mirroring blades, mirroring traps, whatever. Um, very straightforward right and then i did the favorite quest i did through uh Salonopolis is honestly the theater the basically the whole pokemon battles that i made like a video on right the fact is like you can just pick your companion and just go in there and you know just duke it out it's, i mean you have to do it anyways for the main story just once right honestly if there was a badge and you know like there is a replayable feature but if there was a badge for doing it again i would most likely do it again um and it, it, it was fun. It was a fun experience, but I do wish that they made it so you can go inside one of the rooms and just check what the boss is or what the school it is. Then you can go back and pick your Pokemon or pick your ally, companion, whatever you want to call it, right? Um, the reason why I had extra companions is, which I've already uploaded in a previous video of how to find all the secret companions. There's like secret companions you could do from like doing side quests or just like roaming around finding them. And they can assist you in that whole theater. So I'd recommend doing it. At least just get some of the easy ones because uh, it made the whole dungeon, I guess you can say, way more um, easier. So there's that. But I hope in the future they do something again with this mechanic and later on worlds or expansions, etc. Add this, add the system again. Like add some type of companion system like this again. Um, 
you know where they join their fight or if we have like a four player battle and we can have our companions in the back right and they can also cast spells every couple rounds that would be nice basically hall of heroes but the opposite you know instead of them having eight players we have eight players but instead of us being like all individual actual players it's four of us with four companions in the back that'd be a very interesting fight i feel like a lot of people would be like looking forward to something like that but yeah Hopefully we get some type of uh, system like this again in the future. I would like it a lot. Now let's talk about some other fights that you experience, like Kansu, Kansu and Loon Knight. Let's talk about Loon Knight first. Uh, Loon Knight, <laughs> I'll be honest, it's very annoying. Um, it gives me Montgomery vibes a lot. And when I mean Montgomery vibes, like Montgomery's been through multiple cheats or like different like different experiences. Like he was cheesable, he wasn't cheesable. Now he's immune. You got to sit through that whole entire fight. Loon Knight is like you just hear the same cheats over and over and over. It, it it gives me if if you've done the fight called Heidi in I think it's Caramel, and she says her cheat a lot. It's very annoying. Doing this dungeon quite often, at least a couple times, you're gonna get annoyed by the cheat because you just hear it over and over and over. They spam shields, the one-two punch. Let me see. That's the ticket. Oh yes, whatever, like all that stuff, right? You're just gonna, you're gonna hear it a lot. It's gonna be annoying. And um, yeah, you do have to farm this for the gear. Like if you, you know, if you want to get the gear and stuff, which I already made a, made a video talking about the gear and stuff, like where to farm. But um, yeah, these sheets are very annoying. I feel like maybe make it so it's one action per turn or something, just for the like, just for casual play. I feel like advanced combat, do whatever you want. But for casual play, I think it should just be one action per turn. So. If, you know one person already did the blade it shouldn't activate it again in the same round i don't know just my thought but yeah the, like that that fight is um i would consider that the final pause <laughs> instead of consu's low-key but like you know but it's it just because it's more annoying now when it comes to consu per se i think cam did a good job on this fight i think he designed the fight pretty well um i think a lot of people were scared because it's like okay polymorphs I'm thinking about Han Hao, where we're like polymorphed into the priest. I'm thinking a Aeon of Atavis, where I'm polymorphed and I have to kill a specific form. A lot of people were worried about that. So with this fight, I'd say out of all the polymorph fights that we've had so far, I think this is the most bearable. I mean, yes, Han Hao is a little bit different, but Han Hao is like you just can't just spam. Like that's different. That's advanced content. But like if we're just talking about like like comparing it to Aeon of Atavis, I'd say this is more doable um you just have to do your 10k hit you know you have four people uh you can do your 10k hits pretty easily if you just gotta understand the forms i feel like once people understand the forms a little bit better and know what you're exactly supposed to do um very easy to do the fight shouldn't last that long and i'd say it, it's it's a good fight it's a good fight i know some people really wanted it to be hard and you know want it to be more difficult and stuff but let's be honest like those people that are saying that play challenge mode or do raids and stuff i feel like the casual experience let it be easy man just let it be easy get it over with right if you want a challenging fight do challenge mode and then we can talk because i've done challenge mode um and the fact that he can polymorph to hun how devour malice you know all these annoying things a daemon um yeah do challenge mode and then we can talk but like pe those people are just gonna be waiting for the strat anyways and then they'll be like oh it's easy oh it's easy now experience it yourself try to figure it out yourself and then we can talk but yeah if you really want a challenging fight do it on challenge mode. but I, I feel like for casual people bro make it easy like aeon of atavis took people a minute because they didn't understand the fight right off the rip this is just like oh go for a 10k hit okay i get on polymorph okay but like what one more, more do you want <laughs> i'd say they, they did camp the good i think camp the good i feel like no one should give him slack for like saying this fight is like annoying or hard or whatever um I think it's fine. I'm more concerned about Loon Knight per se on standard and on challenge mode rather than Kansu. So there's that. Now let's talk about the gear, right? The gear, the gear, the gear. So many people have like said they like the gear aesthetically. I like it aesthetically, but people are upset that it's the same template. Now, yes, the like the Reaver template is it's exactly the same copy one for one, right? Um, the only thing is the item cards are different. There's that. There is another set that's like the Kansu set. Think of it as like Stalker, but it's not exactly Stalker. It's the same like template, just slightly altered. Um, so you can't say that's one for one copy, right? But I'm gonna be honest, 
I don't mind it. I feel like some people really wanted a new template, but the thing is, you guys gotta understand, a lot of people were complaining about the Nightmare Dungeon. A lot of people still do. Some people just don't like the whole dungeon as a whole, and like you have this whole maze, you gotta find the dream water, defeat these bosses, understand the puzzles, and if you mess up the puzzle, restart the fight, etc. It wasn't as user-friendly um, for like the casual players. Like if people like go into teams of four, they know what you're doing. Like you guys have seen the guides, you guys have seen did people in discords talk about like what to do etc videos you know like those people will know what to do but like a casual person is not going to understand what's going on in that fight and they're just going to like misclick stuff and then people will just be raging and stuff this i feel like is a better alternative for those people like yes if you've already done the nightmare dungeon you've already farmed the gear and stuff like you are complaining that like hey i wish i had new gear but like i'm still gonna be farming this gear i'm gonna be honest i'm still gonna be farming it i do want the item cards they're very viable i'm gonna be farming the hats i'm gonna be farming the decks uh not so much the amulets but probably the like cat boots and decks is what i'm gonna be farming for right just because i like the item cards now you might not like the item cards that's fair but I'm still going to be farming them because I actually see value behind them and I can actually use them in like advanced content or challenge mode or boss rematches or even just any niche fight where I just don't want to like put on a tear jewel or even use TC stack ability purposes like I can go on and on so I'd still say recommend like even if you already have nightmare gear if you're just a casual person and you already have nightmare gear you don't need to like farm like crazy right but if you're someone that like you know cares about those other game modes and doesn't hasn't even done the nightmare dungeon yet i say just keep out of the nightmare dungeon entirely do Kansu, do loot night you'll be more happy trust me um but yeah i'd say the gear's fine personally so it's like you got to think about that would you rather just do like one one to two fights or would you rather do the nightmare dungeon where you gotta do puzzles get dream water fight malice deal with weaknesses mantles all that stuff like we can compare one to one and i'm pretty sure the average person will agree with me that's saying hey i'd rather do selenopolis man <laughs> trust me um so there's that right now now we can actually talk about challenge mode stuff because we did talk about some fights i do want to talk about challenge mode now right i'm not going to go too far in depth but i'll try my best right now i am kind of happy they did reduce the amount of kills that you have to get for like the badges instead of it being 50 like Two of the bosses are like 40, and then I think like Kansu and Luna are like 10 and 15, 10 and 20. I don't remember on top of my head. Could be wrong. I could be wrong. But they're very low amount. Now, I'm happy. I don't have to spend 50 runs in challenge mode for badges and stuff. Like, this is just for the people who do challenge mode, right? You're the casual players not doing this. But the, I think the challenge modes are fine. I think um, Taking Tree, good concept. But honestly, I don't think everyone's going to just use the hanging effects. I feel like it's just faster to just straight up just donate power and just kill, which I'll make a video about. And then same thing with uh, Mother Son. Mother Son's cool concept, but like you don't even face her cheats because by the time it's like round three, you already kill her. So challenge mode is kind of just like, I don't know, it felt kind of easy. So I feel like they should keep this moving forward. I feel like having two easy ones and two difficult ones moving forward is good, but I think having it as a low amount like 40 40 and like the difficult ones that take longer like reducing the amount that's fine man i think that's how the system b should be moving forward i think 50 on everything is a little bit more difficult um but having like you know set numbers for set fights is perfect um but when it comes to like challenge mode on like mother son taking tree those are easy doable um challenge with Kansu, it's just it's basically tt i made a video on tt a while back and i honestly like that fight right people actually had to make a bigger deck Right, it's not a seven card deck anymore. You actually have to have like a, a bigger deck to basically figure out what he polymers into because it's random. He might he might be Hon Ho, he might be um you know Damon, he might be these other bosses, right? It's a random polymorph. So you have to react depending on that. And honestly, once you figure that out, you can discard a lot of cards and just play around your deck. Um so it's just it, to me it's just TT, but upgraded. And it's the moon god. You, you know, so uh so far, I think it's good. I think it's good. And the fact that you can fight Hun Hao and, you know, uh, Damon without having to do raids, you can just do content if you want to experience it. Um, that's nice. I really wish the Nolly was in there, but hey, that's just my opinion. But because so then you can play every single raid in, in that fight. That would be nice. But I think the only thing that, like, my own, ch like, the challenge modes I have to, like, disagree with realistically is going to be Loon Knight. Um, cheat spam is insane. Uh, I don't like I can go on but like that fight is yeah three fights is crazy I mean yes I like I'm glad that they added the addition of wisps after you kill the second 
boss right in the second uh, fight or whatever very nice i'm very happy um <laughs> but yeah the cheats are in that fire insane like just uh, i'm not gonna talk too much about it but yeah like it's cool it's cool it's cool but i think that was like my only gripe about that fight right now i do wish that luminous prophet did have a challenge mode now you guys might, might, might be wondering who the hell are you talking about it's that fusion boss that you fight on one of the streets i believe it's on the death street and um basically it was a good concept fight the area is insane right the fact that we don't even get to see that area again like yeah you can go do the dungeon again yeah sure but like you know like that that could have been a good challenge mode area the fact that you go up this pyramid you have statues in the back it like everything looks so nice i feel like that area is just like kind of gone to waste it like just because i wish it was a challenge mode i would i would gladly go back and go do that right um I mean, the easiest way is to replace either Mother Son or Taken Tree. I feel like out of the two, I mean, depending on whatever I say, one of the devs will get mad at me. <laughs> but like, it would be one of the two. So they can replace one of those and put Luminous Prophet. Because yeah, Luminous Prophet was, it's a nice fight. It's a, it it could have been so much more better. It could have been a challenge with fight. That area is so nice. And a lot of people will agree with me on that. Just because you only get to see that area once and that's it. That's it. That aesthetically pleasing zone just for one fight and never to see again. Bruh. <laughs> so, um, kind of a missed opportunity in my opinion, right? But that's that's it. all I have to say about challenge mode, right? When it comes to, like, those fights. Now, the gear, the challenge mode gear that you get for after, like, completing all, like, the badges and stuff. The gear, it's not for me. I'm gonna be honest. It's really not for me. Am I gonna be, like, you know running around in the commons wearing this is this gonna be like something for me like, maybe not it's, it's really not i like the wings and stuff but like i don't like i don't like uh the claws and and everything like this it's not for me it's not it's not for me but i do like the wands i will say that i'm glad that they added wands this time and it's like for every school you have like different color ones right and i really do wish they were one-handed I think a lot of people would agree with me on this one-handed swords like like if you kept it that big of a length and kept it one-handed dude that'd be so sick that'd be so sick I, I like i literally would have been so gassed but like the fact that it's two-handed like i'm still gonna use them on one of my characters but like damn missed opportunity man but i will say i'm happy that we got wands this time around and not just gear like just not have no boots wands are a good addition now the fact is you can also die this gear i don't know if it's intentional right but you were able to die it on test realm and um that's how it should be i feel like challenge mode gear like you know if you're grinding up this like gear right like pvp gear like the warlord stuff like oh you know all that stuff it's all diable man right like of course not the overlord gear and you know all that other stuff is not diable but i feel like something like this should always be diable moving forward right i think no one will complain about it <laughs> i think more people would be happy that if it's always diable um same thing with the Walrus gear. I wish I could die that too, right? Like, imagine if I can be like, you know, like a gray tone instead of like, a, you know, all that stuff. So they should always make a die but moving forward. And well, you know what? If they want to add another thing to the shop, they should toss in an exclusive pet. Make it literally say exclusive on it. And I feel like a lot more people would be even more happy to even go for this stuff. Um, but obviously, you wouldn't they would have to make sure it's not like a broken pet where it's like so good that, you know, if you don't have this in pvp or advanced content you kind of just like are chalked i feel like i should just give it like some random card that's like not like insane value but just like give it so like an exclusive right exclusive pet uh, i wouldn't mind like a mini version of loon knight or like a duck or something or like uh you know something right <laughs> but still i'm not like that's just me like wanting more right but what i was given i'm happy right but like i wouldn't wear the gear personally other than the sword other than the sword now let's talk about the vendors right very nice thing to talk about but the vendors uh they added tear jewels into the the vendors like you know like the dream water equivalent but this time it's like the moon dust or whatever them adding trap jewels like you know like curse not curse but like death trap ellie trap spirit trap and all that stuff right you can actually buy that in the vendor i do hope that they add curse and hex just because like you know how i think about it is like the waller vendor lets you buy balance blade let me buy curse or hex i feel like just add both i feel like both should be in there to be honest but if they can add curse and hex to your jewels that'd be so nice it would make li life a lot about a lot more easier like for just strats in general because getting curse at least tc is very hard it's, it's, you can't really get that from like a vendor uh hex tc you can but not curse so if you can put curse to your jewel that'd be so nice you know 
I think a lot of people would appreciate it. I know the average player might not use it, but for like strats for advanced content, challenge mode, I'm using that 100%. Um, it makes stack ability way more easier. So please, KI, if you're listening, please add that. Um, also, I do appreciate that they added a vendor where you can convert your socket wrenches, which no one's really talking about. I mean, I guess this only affects like a slight, slight amount of people, but like, hey, if you do like low level PVP or like, you know, you're leveling up a character and you don't have soccer wrenches and you have a bunch of like the, you know, the, lo the max level soccer wrenches, you can just convert those down. Like what? Like, I'm happy about that. Like, I feel like that was a really good change. Uh, you can just convert them down and get whatever one you want for like your low levels. Like, yeah, if you have crowns, yeah, I mean, it doesn't really affect you, but if I don't always want to spend crowns, I mean, hey. Let me just convert my old, like, the, the so many of soccer wrenches I have and convert them down and get, like, low-level ones. I mean, yeah, you could farm the low-level ones, but, like, hey, why not just use your, like, the 70 soccer wrenches you have and, you know, convert some down and, you know, get some low-level ones. I don't know. I don't know. I think that's good, personally. Now let's talk about the Croc update with the whole, you know, rework of how essentially the whole world looks, right? Croc just looks aesthetically more pleasing. Um, a lot of... Uh, models i feel like got changed lighting got changed like just overall i feel like the new croc looks amazing right I'm, this isn't going to be like a five minute topic about this but i'm glad that they did that but i know some people are upset that you can't turn on classic mode and have the old croc gra graphics now i'm gonna be honest guys i don't even know how many people use classic mode right i, I feel like the people that have been saying they want the old graphics back are the same people who don't even use classic mode like there is a select few who use classic mode yeah sure but i'm gonna be honest like i don't think it's a priority right now <laughs> i i feel like this update already was a huge update like i've tested a bunch of test realms in the past but this one is up there with like the like one of the biggest updates and i think people asking for classic mode yeah cool whatever but i like i'm hearing it from people that don't even use classic mode and asking for it um so yeah, like if they want to add classic mode for Croc, go for it. Am I going to be turning on classic mode? More likely not. Uh, I mean, unless I do some random video where it's like looking at old graphics or something, but like, nah, like I'm, I'm just not worried too much about it. Be honest. Okay. Now let's talk about some side quest stuff. And let's also talk about some secret bosses. I do want to like talk about this for like a little bit. Now, all the side quests were like very easy. They weren't like insane hard. They weren't like novice level um, or anything like that. Um, I feel like the side quests are good, right? I do wish Zeke was there. I wish Eloise was there. Free training point. I think a lot of people would appreciate that. Um, it's, I mean, it's not that hard. I feel like to add those, um, maybe they need to reevaluate training points or something like that. But I feel like, hey, I feel like everyone's gonna agree with me. I feel like Eloise was there. Get me so, get me a gold key on every single character. I wish Zeke was there. Get me a training point on all my characters, right? That's just me being biased. If everyone else is there, why isn't Zeke and Eloise there? You know, like, like you have Sarah Nightshade in, in back in Salonopolis. Like, like comes out of nowhere in the storyline. But where's Eloise? Where's Zeke? Did they just, they just didn't come by or like with, with, they're on vacation? Um, yeah, I feel like they should have been there. And then on top of that, like, I mean, overall, the side quests are fine, though. Right? I did like the well, one side quest I did like was where Pork would, would just join your fight. And you basically have to help him out, give him the pips that he needs, and he just supernova is the boss, and then you can just kill him. Like he like he won't die in the fight. Even if he does die, he just comes back alive. I've I've already made a video covering it, but yeah, like that that was that was a sick fight. I hope they do something like that again in future side quests. Um so whoever made that fight, props to you, man. Like that that was a really good mechanic. Um and I, I hope to see more of that in the future. Now there are secret bosses in um Salonopolis. I've already covered them on the channel all the secret bosses i've literally covered everything in Salonopolis. um but there were croc secret bosses there's basically like rank 999 um croc bosses and you know they just have like a set amount of hp you just kill them and you know once you kill all of them you get a badge right but there was one special croc boss which is on top of Salonopolis, which i knew was up there just because the teaser image had a battle circle up there it just made the most sense that he was up there right but um he had like unique cheats you actually had to played like a riddle and every time he got the riddle correct uh he would put a trap on himself now i feel like i don't know why they didn't do that to all of them <laughs> I, why does the one on top of the selenobus have it like he's like super unique um i mean yeah you do like the, that one you can't get till you finish selenobus because it's behind kansu like the door to get to him it's behind kansu um uh, so i guess well that's why he's there but 
I really think they should have added. I mean, unless they added it, but like from from the last time I tested it, I really wish that they added those same cheats or like new riddles to all these croc bosses. It would have made it so much more fun. It's a secret boss. I feel like that was a very missed opportunity. Um, yeah, and the whole badge you guys like those like something about riddles. I think I don't remember the badge on top of my head. Something about riddles, right? But it doesn't make sense when only one of the bosses has riddles and none of the other croc bosses have riddles. So I feel like a hey, missed opportunity right there, but. No, hey, it is what it is. But the other side boss, or the secret boss, or whatever, that you do fight is uh, the great one, right? I didn't even think this man was ever coming back, right? I've already made two videos talking about the great one, right? You're just on some random sigil, some random sigil, and you can just fight him, and he has 3 million HP. Now, originally, I had 2 million, and I felt like, I even said it on stream, I felt like this doesn't feel like a secret boss, right? Because we've already had a 2 mil boss before, which is Baron uh, Baron Von Bracken. And I was like, you know what? I even said on stream, I was like, they should make it 3 million HP and they don't feel like a secret boss. Kid you not, the devs heard me out <laughs> and they made him have 3 million HP and gave him a, gave him a badge. Now that is sick. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm biased because, you know, they heard me out on this. I mean, if you guys are going to get mad at me for him having 3 million HP, keep in mind, this is secret boss. You're only going to do this once, unless you want this badge on every single character. Like, probably do it like seven or seven or more times, depending if you have character elixirs, right? But like, it, it's just, it's so, it's, there's no cheats. You can go for a three million hit pretty easily. Um, yeah, I'm just glad they kind of heard me out on that. It just, now it feels more unique because it's the highest health enemy in the game. Now, yes, yeah, some people were bringing up the idea, well, there's Storm Triton, right? Technically, no, because Storm Triton, you just have to hit with the heck count and you just do like, was it two? I don't even remember what it was. 250k? 25k? I don't even remember. Yeah, he doesn't have that much health because you just have to reach a certain threshold and you kill him. This, you actually have to do 3 million HP. So, yeah, the, the great one is literally the highest health mod in the game or boss, whatever. Um, so, hey, I'm going to be biased and I say I like that fight. That's just me. Right? Good addition. Cool badge. You literally get called greatest one. Like what? I'm probably going to use that badge on one of my characters, not going to lie. So there's that. Now let's talk about spells. We've gone this far into the video, right? Um, spells, spells. So literally, I thought they were going to be doing spells where they had like a school pip and stuff. I just felt like that that's what we're getting moving forward is <laughs> just school pip stuff. But uh, the seven pip hits other than the life one, which is just a heal. Uh, I felt like the life one should have had a hit because uh, the Twilight boss has that same animation, but they, she hits you. So um, yeah, I mean, the heal's cool and all, but, like, I'm not going to be using the heal in PvE. Um, Vance content, though, in PvP, yo, you guys are eating good. Like, li life is already crazy enough in PvP. You just, they just got the biggest buff with the freaking <laughs> three hots, man. Uh, and the crazy healing. I've, I've seen a video from, like, Sauce, and, and, uh, and, like, I've already seen people, like, send me clips of them using the life spell. Dude, that's insane, man. <laughs> that's insane. In, in a PvP, in PvP. But, yeah, like, the, the casual seven pip hits... I'm be honest, I don't know how often I'm gonna be using them, right? Casual play, most of the time we just get to play Blade AoE. Uh an advanced content, like I don't know. It's it's a very situational on how I'm gonna be using these spells. I try to use them as much as I can in test realm because I'm like, look, I'm probably not gonna be using these spells in live realm. And that's just me being honest, right? I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Um now look, the fusions though, on the other hand, like the mono fusions and stuff like that, where you can combine them with another card. Hey, maybe I might use it a little bit more right maybe but that's more likely in advanced content i would be probably using them same thing with the bottom paths i'll more likely be using the spells in advanced content like the bottom paths top path i'm just not going to be using um so yeah realistically i'm only using the spell for the bottom paths and it depends on the school like certain schools i'm not even going to use this spell um but like hey like i was going to use the mid spell before like you know pre-patch you know before like it was like doing even hits on both hits but you know everyone got their orthrus that they wanted so you know props to them but i honestly like the old spell that's just me right that's, i'm gonna that's just my opinion it was so good for like uh bubble fights where it's like you know you get a damage cap and stuff which i've already talked about in a previous video a lot of the stuff i've already talked about in previous videos are on stream but like i just want to compile it into one video right but yeah like Hey man, you guys got your Orthrus, you guys are happy, but I think, I don't know how often people are going to be actually using it still. I'm be honest, right? 
maybe in pvp maybe in pvp like a lot of a lot of these spells people are probably gonna be using in pvp or advanced content like the bottom paths or like the fusions and stuff so there's that now like the other spells right like you know the auras and everything else they added into the game because they added a lot of spells right people aren't realizing this they added a lot of spells it wasn't just the school spells right we also did get new spells for i believe ice and myth and like some other schools and we got auras right which i've talked about on the channel like out of the new auras i'm only going to be using continuate stabilize is very maybe but like continuate is what i'm going to be using you can bypass a lot of cheats with that you can do some cheese stuff with it there's so many things about continuate like people aren't realizing yet but continuate is like one of the best cards that they released in a minute um, yeah it's only 20 percent, but guys you realize the value behind it trust me realize the value behind it continuate is good it is very good now like the other spells like you know blade delusion trap delusion I'll be honest i'm not gonna be using those um yeah unless they make a fight where it's like it forces me to use it then sure but like at the moment i'm not gonna be using them right um maybe pvp players might have a different topic on that but honestly i don't think me personally i'm gonna be using that but impair and purge removing three blades or removing three negative charms best cards literally best cards um and yeah i'm pretty sure you can train these so like if i'm on like storm i can train purge i can train impair very nice i'm gonna be using these 100 i think everyone should be training impair and purge uh so you don't have to like impair you can probably rock it's just literally a tc and feeble but now it's like ice and stuff that removes three but i feel like purge i'm gonna be training that i'm 100 gonna be training that on like all my characters same thing with impair um it's not a bad training point economy wise so like i'll do it um i can definitely see myself using those cards now, and then like courageous charge and spinning scythe spinning scythe I've talked about it like I don't know how often I'll be using it like till I get samurai once you get samurai it's like okay just use samurai um but then you know I don't want to say that because then they'll reevaluate school pips so let's just say spinning scythe is good um <laughs> but I'll be honest just use samurai um and then yeah with courageous charge uh, it's probably going to be a pvp spell more likely just because it's a hit in echo right when you see something like that that's pvp orientated so there's that right so those are just my opinions on spell, but I'm more likely happy about Intinuate, I guess Stabilize, I guess. And then Impair and Purge. Cosmic Charge and like all these other spells, I don't know how often I really use. So I'm not going to be thinking about it right now. Um, so there's that. Now we can talk about like the fusions and the weaving stuff. Now this is like a big topic just in its whole. Um, but I'm trying not, I'll try not to go too in depth. But I'll be honest, this whole entire fusions and weaving stuff is optional. You're never forced to do this they're they're not forcing you to do this um it's just something if you want to do right am i gonna recommend that you do it 100 percent 100 percent i recommend everyone should be doing it and if you want to figure out what path to choose i've already made a video on talking about that and stuff right but realistically you know you just have like, the best way to do it is you talk to a tree you pick the tree that you want to like weave into um and then you have like a set quest line that you have to finish and uh, once you finish that quest line you unlock like different rewards like you unlock the dual jewels um like the dual pierce jewels specifically specifically uh which is like pierce jewels for your school and then whatever other school you weaved into and then on top of that you do have uh the fusion spells and then you do have like the utility spells which i mean i've talked about in another video right there's a lot of things that we can go in depth in but if the tldr of it is i highly recommend that you do it I'm going to be using the spells. It will make a lot of fights faster. Um, I can cheese a lot of fights even too. <laughs> with some of these percentages is insane. They're basically faint blades at this point. Like it's an, like what? Um, yeah, they're not banned. So <laughs> yeah, they're, those, these blades are crazy. Like, yeah, but I, I recommend you do it right. And to be honest, they even reduce the amount of effort that you have to do now for like ranking up before because initially when it came out people were complaining about how long it's going to take yes on test realm it's like oh you only have to kill one actually oh you only have to collect this fish once because it was test realm um but yeah the, like the the lessons were reduced by like a lot for when they come out initially um i don't have them on top of me so i can't really include them in this video but whenever i make my like weaving video like um the, you know tutorial on it because i didn't want to make it till like the numbers are finalized so now that they've been like roughly finalized i can make a video talking about that but TLDR, do it. I recommend it. Worth it. It's actually worth your time. But I would probably focus on all the other Selenopolis stuff first and then come back and do your fusion weaving stuff. Um, that's just my opinion. You know, we're at the end of the video, so now we're just going to be talking about like some side notes that I do want to bring up. Now, there's some good quality of life things that they added, right? Like the pack inspect and the chest inspect. I've already made like a YouTube short on this, but 
it's very nice that they added this right now people are saying like or like DMing me like hey um they already had this they already had this they didn't have chest inspect you can never inspect the boss and be like oh well, you dropped these things oh cool that was never a thing and then pack inspect yes it was a thing but it wasn't improved it's basically improved upon because now you can actually see everything that's in the pack not just hey you just hear some random items that are coming in the pack you can visually see everything that's in the pack um and it makes it easier for me for like a content standpoint and I, for you too like as a player like if you're like oh let me just see what this we'll compare some stats real quick in the pack boom easy and it tells you the rarity too so like you can be like oh this no wonder i haven't gone this 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 or whatever because it's super rare or like whatever it's called right <laughs> so I, I think it's a nice feature overall right it's very good quality of life another quality of life change is like the mark and recall stuff right being able to leave a marker and then like you know after you use that marker um it stays there it's very nice man like i feel like not many people are asking for something like this right but now that like, it is a thing it's a, it's a very good quality of life i'm happy right i'm gonna be you know like i feel like a lot of people are gonna enjoy this while questing especially and then on top of that it costs less mana right i think it's just an overall good quality of life right and then the last thing i want to talk about last but not least is the bizarre right the bizarre controversy <laughs> that everyone's been talking about oh they nerfed gold i even talked about it right i even like you know post my video a little bit late and people were upset at me but like hey man content's content <laughs> but like i had other priorities but like yes like your gold is fine like the bazaar is just a better ui overall as a whole and then like guys you can sell jewels now right you got like your gold isn't nerfed you can still sell your empowers you can still sell your snacks you can do all that normally right and then on top of that the ui is a little bit better um and then you can sell like i think monstrology tc now too i think someone told me about that but then yeah you can sell you can sell jewels and there's not like a lag interface where it's like oh if you load in a category like you have to like wait for it to like say loading and everything like that it's not like that you just click on it and then it's already instantly loaded i do have some issues with it though like for some reason like well, at least on test room uh i was trying to sell some stuff just to like another character and stuff um but it doesn't even pop up in the bazaar instantly i feel like if unless someone else is selling something then it will pop up in the bazaar but like i sat there waiting for like a little bit and it wasn't being sold like it sold yes but like it wasn't appearing in the bazaar so i can buy it on another character um which i mean hopefully that gets fixed i don't know if that's intentional or not of putting a delay so people don't like sit there in the bazaar like i don't know but I think that overall that's a good change now there probably is some other stuff that i did include like the backpack buddy and like some other stuff right but i kind of want to just highlight everything that was important to me like yes there was the tutorials that they added for like arc mastery and stuff but it doesn't affect me right because i already know how to how arc mastery works i already know how like the fusion stuff works but as a casual player yeah you guys can probably be happy about that like now you guys have, can just do the tutorial and understand how arc mastery works the tutorial was done right like the devs that whoever made the tutorials they did it right um but just it's not really that important to me because hey i've i know these things already <laughs> but for the newcomers like they would appreciate that and then on top of that i didn't talk about beast moon um tldr right like i do play but i'm not like super in depth and you know tier fives everything and stuff like that like i do the pve beast moon at most i don't play the like the player versus player one just because of how toxic it can get at sometimes i like playing player versus environment um and I'd rather get mad at bots. <laughs> so yeah, the Beastman forums, I can't really say too much about it. I know some people like the Storm Fairy. Some people might like the, the Myth Elf. I'm not going to give my two two cents about it too much. But I mean, hey, Storm forums are good. That's all I say. Storm forums are always so good. <laughs> but yeah. And that's basically it. There's Like I said, there's some other stuff I didn't cover. But these are like the majority of things that I'm like, okay, these are the important ones in my eyes. Um, and yeah, so... That is it. Leave a like, subscribe, all that type of stuff. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my whole opinion. Just overall, I think the update's amazing. I think the update is very amazing. And I think, I know people want more. Everyone's gonna want more, right? But I feel like this update was done perfect. For not having a world update, for not having a world update and not having a level increase, this is a huge update. Like I did not expect so many things to be coming out in this update. Like, yes, I did expect certain things, but this went further like further beyond what i would be thinking about and honestly props to the devs props to the whole team that was like working on this right yes there were some things that i'm like i kind of i'm kind of iffy about but like overall man for what they did in this update like and i've done test rooms in the past i've done multiple multiple test rooms in the past um I, i'd say overall they did a good job like they did an amazing job 
right and they were here hearing player feedback like that's what you want to hear from a dev team like like at least player fit feedback or if they're not gonna like if they're not gonna do something that you want but they give you like you know like their thought process on it or like whatever like why they're not doing certain things people enjoy that regardless because you get to hear feedback from devs you know you're communicating with them so overall it's a really good update really amazing and um yeah so look out for more videos on the channel test rooms around the corner or not really sound novelist is coming to live realm soon that's what i'm trying to say it will be out soon uh probably this upcoming week or like the week after but you'll know you'll know i'll make a youtube short about it you'll know <laughs> don't stress about the update so much um but yeah that is it leave a like subscribe all that type of stuff join discord do all that stuff um and yeah i'll talk to you guys in the next one peace out guys <laughs>